good morning friends today we will learn about pneumonia uh, what is pneumonia how a patient of pneumonia presents clinically what are the signs and symptoms of pneumonia what are the causative agent and how we can diagnose pneumonia so let's start so what is pneumonia pneumonia basically it is the infection of lung parenchyma and its alveoli and how it is present that is characterized by consolidation of lungs productive cuff with purulent sputum now the pneumonia can be of two type one is typical pneumonia that is a lobar pneumonia or atypical pneumonia where it involves the interstitial tissue so typical pneumonia or atypical pneumonia the causative agents are also different for lobar pneumonia and for atypical pneumonia so this lobar pneumonia or typical pneumonia is caused by mainly by the streptococcus pneumoniae hemophilus influenzae staphylococcus aureus and gram negative bacilli so there can be many gram negative bacilli which can cause this pneumonia in case of atypical pneumonia it occurs in the interstitial space of lung the cuff is non productive so uh, when i'm talking about typical pneumonia there is a productive cuff that means the sputum is coming out with the cuff in atypical it is involving the interstitial space so there is non productive no sputum is coming out only cuff is there now the causative agent are also different here that is it is caused by mycoplasma chlamydia legionella species so how the patient of pneumonia clinically presents that is the patient will have the fever with chills they can be sweating tachycardia increase respiratory rate this is very important that the respiratory rate count will be increased in the case of pneumonia that is known as tachypnea now the respiratory rate count differ on the basis of age group like infant has different child has different then the adult has different respiratory rate so that should be known and when you will count the respiratory rate that will be increased then there will be increased uh, use of accessory muscles so what are these uh, uh, these accessory muscles of respiration like you have uh, this sternocleido uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle pectoralis externa intercostal so these accessory muscles used will be decreased in case of pneumonia and that you can easily notice depending upon how much uh, severe is the condition of the child they can be nasal flaring or they can be chest in drawing so all these will tell you that there is a increased respiratory rate then dyspnea that is the shortness of breath pleuritic chest pain gastrointestinal symptom can be found in few of the cases like of nausea vomiting diarrhea fatigueness headache myalgia so all these will be there so the important point to note is there there will be fever there will be tachypnea there will be increased use of accessory muscles and dyspnea in case of severely ill patient the patient can land up in the septic shock or the multi organ failure now we will come to the most important uh, causative agent of the pneumonia that is a pneumococcal pneumonia which is caused by streptococcus pneumoniae which is a gram positive cocci that is a bacteria and it is a leading cause in children and also it is the most important cause of meningitis in all the age groups so we should know little bit about this pneumococcal uh, what is this streptococcus pneumoniae so these are uh, uh, they show the alpha hemolytic colonies on the blood agar and they are present as common cells in the upper respiratory tract now uh, as i have told you that this shows alpha hemolysis that is it is a partial hemolysis on the blood agar that means there is a greenish discoloration on the blood agar plate now there is another bacteria which are also present in as common cell in our oral flora so they can also have the same picture because they are also alpha hemolytic so we should know the difference between the pneumococcus and the virulence group that is streptococcus pneumoniae they are gram positive cocci but they are in pairs there is virulence they are in long chains streptococcus pneumoniae shape is lanceolate shape and where they are oval or round capsule is present in case of pneumonia and they shows the draftmans or the carom coin colony 
that means uh, when you will see it will uh, colony on the plate they will appear like a carom coin whereas the verdens group they have the minute colony now this pneumococcus is soluble in bile so you can have the uh, bile solubility test on the plate as well as on the tube then uh, verdens septococci they are insoluble in bile the another test which differentiate the two that is the inulin fermentation so that is give uh, positive by the septococcus pneumoniae and optogen sensitivity that is septococcus pneumoniae is sensitive to optogen disc and whereas it is resistant that means we are uh, inoculating this bacteria on the blood agar plate and we are putting a disc of optogen so we put on that if there is any zone which is zone of inhibition that will show that it is sensitive if there is no zone of inhibition that means it is a resistant which is showing that they are verdens bacteria now what are the virulence factor of this streptococcus pneumoniae one is the capsule polysaccharide that is it shows the presence of capsule which is a very virulent factor for this bacteria it is why it is a very important causative agent for pneumonia as well as for meningitis because this capsule protects the bacteria from the phagocytosis now it is also useful for us that we can identify uh, the bacteria on the basis of capsule we can differentiate that we, we can do the typing of different streptococcus pneumoniae the second virulent factor is the c carbohydrate antigen uh, it's not c reactive protein but it precipitated with this therefore we are saying it's a c carbohydrate antigen this is a marker of acute inflammation then pneumolysin which inhibits the neutrophil chemotaxis and phagocytosis then it also secretes another enzyme that is the autolysin autolysin means it will autolyze itself that is a peculiar property of this bacteria that you will see a uh, colony is there on the plate and few days later when you will take out that plate you will see there is no colony that means the enzyme secreted by it it will lyse itself that are the amidase enzyme that cleave its own peptide glycan that due to which it have the draftsman appearance then other virulence factor are the pneumococcal surface protein iga protease neuraminidase pneumococcal surface adhesion now pathogenesis what all diseases it can cause streptococcus pneumoniae that is the loba pneumonia and as the empyema so empyema mainly there is a uh, pus collection in the pleural region so that is the empyema para pneumonic effusion means after pneumonia there is a pleural effusion simultaneously so that is known as para pneumonic effusion that means with the pneumonia there is effusion also invasive pneumococcal disease when it involves the other systems of the body then it becomes a invasive pneumococcal disease and then there is non invasive manifestation that is a normal infections so invasive pneumococcal disease that means the infection is confirmed by isolation of this bacteria from a sterile site now it is involving the sterile site like you can have blood stream infection you can have csf infection so pyogenic meningitis it is very important cause in all the age group except only the neonates it is the most important cause of meningitis other than that it can cause osteomyelitis septic arthritis endocarditis uh, brain abscess so now the epidemiology so main source of infection who are transmitting the infection they are the carriers who are the upper respiratory tract carrier who are carrying this bacteria less often transmitted by patients so this is very important the carriers are the main who are transmitting the infection now carrier date up to the age of 5 years 70 to 90% of the children carry this bacteria in the nasopharynx from the uh, carrier it can be transmitted to other person by inhalation of droplet nuclei it will lead to the colonization and carrier spread and as the person will have the low immunity it will result into the disease now who all are uh, at risk of getting this infection so that is very important because we have an option we can prevent this infection by giving the vaccine to this 
person who are the target for this disease. So what are the children? They are less than two years because they have a weaker immune system. So they are always at risk of getting this infection. Then the person who have the splenectomy, sickle cell disease because the spleen is not there. So some disorder is there. That means because it is a capsulated bacteria and for the capsulated pathogen mainly the spleen is the uh, main organ which is playing the role. If it is not there, so they are at risk of getting this pneumococcal infection. Now the underlying comorbid diseases are there like if a person is having any chronic lung disease, heart disease, kidney disease. So if the person is having any chronic disorder like diabetes mellitus, so they all are at risk of this pneumococcal bacteria. Then if there is a viral upper respiratory tract infection, then also you can have the, uh, like in viral cases, we are taking the antibiotic to prevent this bacterial co-infection. That is the reason why the antibiotics are given. Because they are not acting on the virus, but mainly at the viral infection time, our immunity goes down and you can have the uh, uh, simultaneous infection of the bacteria. Now, how we can diagnose this case? So, depending upon what all disease it can cause, there can be different samples like you can have sputum, CSF, pleural fluid. But as we are talking here, for the pneumonia, so you can have this sputum mainly the uh, sample. Direct smear microscopy you can do. So at that time you will see that pustules are there and there are some lanceolate shaped gram positive diplococci which are present in pairs and they are surrounded by a clear halo which is due to the capsule. Then we will go for the culture. So on culture you will see there will be uh, for that, I want to tell you that for pneumococcus, you need 5 to 7% of the CO2 that will enhance its hemolysis as well as enhance its growth. So, whenever you are suspecting this or for the pneumonia or suspecting for pneumococcus bacteria, that plate, culture plate should be put in the candle jar. So, uh, you will see the colony there and that will show the alpha hemolysis. So, you will suspect this bacteria, then you will do the gram staining. In gram staining, you will find out gram positive diplococci, which are lanceolate shaped. Lanceolate means flame shaped. It will be appear like a flame. Now, then you will do all the biochemical tests, which I have just told you how to differentiate from the Virden's group because you have noticed the greenish discoloration. So, only two pathogens can be there. Either it is a normal flora or it is a Streptococcus pneumoniae. So, on biochemical identification, one is important biosolubility. You can check. You have to use the bile. That is 2% sodium deoxycholate. Just put a drop on the colony on the plate. So, it will lyse immediately that colony. That colony will lyse. Or you can have the 10% uh, sodium deoxycholate test in the test tube. So, that you can do. That is a biosolubility test. Then you can have the optogen test inulin fermentation and another test is there that is animal inoculation so you can also go for the animal inoculation so that will cause a pathogenicity in the like in mice we do and there is in case of virulence group there will be no pathogenicity then there are automated methods also like you can have malditor phytet then serotyping so that is very important serotyping by the cooling reaction or the latest agglutination test and molecular methods are there. Non-specific findings like you can have raised CRP because there is infection. You can also go for procalcitonin testing. It will also be raised. And uh, finally, you will have the AST that is antimicrobial susceptibility testing. Now, how will you treat this case? So, if the patient is of pneumonia, so oral therapy with amoxicillin for 5 days, that is a standard treatment. Alternatively, you can have septiaxone or from the quinolone group, you can give levofloxacin, moxifloxacin, clindamycin, azithromycin. So, depending upon your EST findings, uh, which drug is coming sensitive, you can have the treatment protocol. If the uh, this septicus pneumonia is causing the meningitis, so mortality is very high. So, as early as possible, the treatment should be start. Septiaxone or septiaxone with or without vancomycin. 10 to 14 days. 
other invasive infections are there so for this you have amoxicillin for 7 to 10 days so they can be mdr pneumococcus when the resistant to penicillin erythromycin tetracycline clindamycin and sulfonamide so that will be called as the mdr pneumococcus optogen sensitivity i have already told you so that is showing that there is a zone of inhibition present on the blood agar plate that shows it is sensitive and it is streptococcus pneumococcus. Now come to the vaccines. So there are two types of vaccine, 23 valent pneumococcal polycyclic vaccine and 13 valent. So I have already made a small video on that. So from there you can see in which age group or in which patient we will recommend for this two type. What are the benefits? of each vaccine what are the disadvantages of each vaccine i have mentioned in that video in detail so from there you can check this is pcv 13 and in which age group it is being indicated what are the indications for the pneumococcal vaccine so that is i've already told you all those persons who are at risk uh, like spinectomy any chronic disorder in the child age group of less than two years so in all those it is being recommended so that's all for the pneumococcal pneumonia. Soon, uh, important topic of this has been missed. That is the uh, H influenza, but the video will be a uh, little bit longer if I include it in that. So I will make it uh, on that topic that is H influenza pneumonia, which is very important part of this pneumonia. So hope so you must have learned and understood this topic well. If you have any doubt, you can easily communicate me on my email ID or in the comment section. And all the comments are welcome. If you like, please share with your friends so that they can also have this knowledge. Thank you.